Caitlin Coons, an ordinary 17-year-old teenager from Ohio, found herself at the center of a shocking crime. Her life, already difficult from early childhood, took a dark turn when her path crossed with Jonathan Jones. His pursuit of Caitlin was not only scandalous, but also unlawful, which strained his relationship with his disapproving mother. However, the woman could never have known what horrific finale her protest would lead to. Caitlin, driven by desperation, gave Jonathan an ultimatum. On April 11, 2023, 17-year-old Caitlin Coons from Ohio disappeared. Police suspected that she was abducted by 33-year-old Jonathan Jones. At the time the media reported the abduction, she had been missing for several hours. Both were declared missing persons, and the police distributed a description of the girl. She was 160 centimeters tall, weighed about 50 kilograms, with chestnut hair and green eyes. She was last seen wearing a pink jacket and gray leggings. Anyone with information about Caitlin or Jonathan was urged not to approach them but to contact the police. The search for the teenager was joined by the media, the public, and even activists, including Alicia Kozakovich, who had herself been a victim of abduction and now recorded a short video to draw maximum attention to Caitlin's case. Fortunately, it didn't take long for the police to find Jonathan in Mexico. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when it turned out that Caitlin was alive and well. However, suddenly out of nowhere, the media broke the news that the police had arrested not only Jonathan but also Caitlin for murder and possibly attempted murder. In fact, this story began on October 24, 2022, when Ohio police noticed an unusual couple walking quite late at night near a truck stop and roadside cafe. Something about this couple caught the officer's attention, so they stopped them to make sure everything was okay. Standing before them was a very young girl, still a teenager, and a man over 30 years old. The girl immediately behaved suspiciously and lied to the police about her date of birth and name. However, the officers persisted, so the girl eventually told them her name was Caitlin Coons. She was 16 years old, and she was a runaway, escaping from foster care in another county in Ohio. The man she was with was named Jonathan Jones, and he was 32 years old. Diligent officers discovered that Caitlin was supposed to be in a clinic in Columbus, and she was not allowed to leave the hospital, yet the couple clearly had a plan. At the agreed time, the man stopped near the hospital and the girl escaped, after which he took her to another county in the state. Examining Jonathan's phone, the police discovered indecent photos of Caitlin, as well as photos and videos of their intimate moments together. Jonathan confessed to the police that he planned to sell these photos. Of course, after this, Caitlin was returned to state custody, and the man was arrested and charged with endangering the life of a child and creating and distributing indecent material. The man pleaded guilty, and he was sent home to await trial. But before that, a GPS tracker was placed on his ankle to track his location. Needless to say, he was prohibited from getting anywhere near Caitlin. Jonathan lived in his mother's house, a kind and loving woman, 53-year-old Nicole Jones. She must have been somewhat tired of her son's antics, including his arrest, but nevertheless, she allowed him to live in her house. Everything seemed fine until May 2023, when the police received a call requesting them to go to Nicole Jones's house to check on her well-being. The case was that a nurse from the foster home where Caitlin lived received a message from Caitlin's phone stating that Caitlin ran away because she killed two people, one of whom was her boyfriend's mother. Concerned, the nurse contacted the police asking them to visit Nicole Jones to ensure she was alive and well. On May 5, 2023, the police went to the house but found no one there, neither Nicole nor her son. At that time, they were not looking for evidence of a murder. But things escalated much faster when a warrant was issued for Jonathan's arrest because he failed to appear in court on charges of endangering the life of a child and creating and distributing indecent material related to his arrest the previous October. As this coincided almost simultaneously with Caitlin's disappearance on April 11th, the police concluded that Jonathan had kidnapped the teenager. The case was treated as the abduction of a minor, as Jonathan was 33 at the time, while Caitlin was only 17, leading detectives to believe that Jonathan went on the run, taking Caitlin with him. The girl and her abductor were actively sought, with the FBI joining the effort. All the news outlets were reporting on the abduction, emphasizing the urgency of finding the girl as soon as possible. However, to everyone's surprise, finding Jonathan and Caitlin turned out to be remarkably easy. Detectives unexpectedly discovered that they could easily track the man down. 
How? Quite simply, he still hadn't removed the GPS tracker from his ankle. It turned out that by that time, the pair had already crossed the border into Mexico. On May 8th, the police found them in Ahumada, a municipality in northern Mexico. Jonathan was sitting in Nicole's Buick and had with him her social security card, the woman's identification, her credit cards, and even her medical insurance card. The man was immediately arrested and taken in for questioning. Initially, Caitlin was still considered Jonathan's victim. On the 8th, she posted two messages on social media asking to be taken back to America because she was asked to leave Mexico. On the 9th, she wrote, I just got out of the shelter where I spent the night. I need someone to pick me up in Texas. Sorry for not responding for so long. They didn't allow me to keep my things at the shelter. Write to me or leave a comment if you can come. However, after the last post, many comments appeared from people saying that she had already been arrested and extradited to America on May 13th. Caitlin was handed over to American authorities at the border station in El Paso, where she was questioned by FBI agents. The thing is, initially the police viewed Caitlin as a victim of an adult predator, but it turned out to be more than just an older man preying on a teenager. It was something much bigger. After Jonathan's arrest, he didn't shut himself off and instead talked about how things unfolded before the escape. Caitlin also gave statements to FBI agents after her arrest. Here's what they found out. In April 2023, Caitlin once again ran away from the orphanage dormitory. Jonathan picked her up from a restaurant and took her to the house where he lived with his mother. In reality, Jonathan's mother, Nicole, didn't even know that a girl was living in her son's bedroom because Caitlin sneaked in through the window. Nicole never approved of her son's relationship with such a young girl, still a teenager. Perhaps less than 12 months later, Caitlin and Jonathan would have had the opportunity to be more open about their relationship because Caitlin would have turned 18 and circumstances might have been different, but not now. Caitlin didn't like that Nicole disapproved of their relationship, but judging by her social media post, she enjoyed living in her boyfriend's house because she wrote, Life is great when you have your own home in Ohio, if only his mother weren't present. So, on one not-so-beautiful day, she gave her boyfriend an ultimatum. I'm giving you five hours to deal with your mother, the 17-year-old girl told the 33-year-old man. During the interrogation, she later unequivocally stated that she meant to kill the woman. But even despite the additional hour Caitlin gave Jonathan, the specified time came and went without incidents because Jonathan had no intention of harming his own mother. So Caitlin decided to act on her own. She slipped out onto the street and picked up a big rock, then returned to the house. At that time, Jonathan was sitting in the living room and his mother was in the kitchen, standing in front of the open refrigerator. The woman had no idea that there was a third person in her house, having no clue what would happen when a teenage girl attacked her. Caitlin hit her with the rock, once, twice, thrice. Seeing that after those blows Nicole wouldn't be able to resist her, the girl started choking her. It's hard to even imagine what Jonathan felt when he entered the kitchen and saw his dead mother, his young lover, standing over her, and blood, probably everywhere. But he didn't try to help his mother or call the police. No, instead, Jonathan and Caitlin got into Nicole's car and drove to two different stores, where they bought a tarp and garbage bags. When they returned home, they quickly cleaned the blood in the kitchen, wrapped Nicole's body in the bags and tarp, then headed to the nearest apartment complex where they disposed of the body in the trash. And then they went on the run. As indicated in the police report, after the couple's arrest, officers found a backpack with burgundy stains. After Caitlin's confession, the police obtained a search warrant for Nicole's house, and during the search, they found, as they believe, blood on the kitchen floor near and under the refrigerator, where the unsuspecting woman was standing before the attack. Furthermore, the pings from Jonathan's phone and his Apple Watch corroborate the couple's account of where they disposed of the body. An obvious question arises, why couldn't they just run away right away? Why did they have to kill an innocent woman just because she didn't approve of the relationship between a 17-year-old girl and her 33-year-old son, and then still run away anyway? Judging by the fact that the couple was found with the woman's credit and debit cards, as well as in her car, the question was about the lack of money for the escape plan. But if you remember, a message came to the nurse from the children's home where Caitlin lived, stating that Caitlin allegedly killed two people, who became her second victim. At the time this message was sent, Jonathan and Caitlin were in Arizona, intending to cross the border into Mexico. 
They were detained in Arizona but quickly released, and the second person whom Caitlin allegedly killed was a man from Arizona. He turned out to be an innocent bystander standing at the bus stop. The man was just waiting for a bus when Caitlin and Jonathan drove by, and the girls shot at him. Fortunately, she missed, and the man was not injured, but they obviously assumed that the girl hit him and wrote about it to the nurse. According to the Ohio prosecutor, law enforcement agencies in Arizona are dealing with this case. He did not comment on how the couple acquired the weapon and why they suddenly decided to open fire on completely unknown people. Since Nicole Jones's murder is marked by incredible cruelty, Caitlin Coons will be tried as an adult, meaning that if she is found guilty, she could face an entirely different punishment up to the death penalty. However, minors cannot be executed, so she is unlikely to be sentenced to death. Essentially, she faces imprisonment ranging from 25 years to life if found guilty. As a minor, if she were to plead guilty, she would have served 21 years in a juvenile detention center and possibly some time in an adult prison. In addition to this, she is accused of tampering with evidence, punishable by up to three years in prison and desecration of a body, for which she could receive a sentence of up to a year. Jonathan, despite not personally killing his mother, faces the same charges, in addition to charges that were against him before the escape, as well as robbery. The bail for his release from prison is set at $1 million. However, even though Jonathan and Caitlin confessed to the crime, it does not mean that the legal process will be quick and straightforward. Caitlin's lawyer claims that although the girl inflicted fatal injuries on Nicole, she herself became a victim of violence and abduction by Jonathan. After all, he was prohibited from having any contact with her. So the defense strategy chosen by the lawyers is apparent. They will insist that Caitlin did not act alone, but under the influence of an older and experienced man. Allegedly, even the message to the nurse in which she confessed to the murder might not have been sent by her. Investigators do not know who exactly did it. Perhaps Jonathan forced her to write the message or sent it himself. In other words, they will try to shift the blame for the crime onto the man. On the other hand, Jonathan's lawyer will argue, hold on a second, do you really think my client is so stupid as to not remove the GPS tracker before going on the run? Doesn't he know how GPS works? In reality, he was trying to lead the police to Caitlin because he himself was afraid of her. Additionally, as seen from the court documents, Jonathan's lawyer has another defense strategy, to claim that he is not guilty by reason of insanity. So the accused will blame each other, and it will be very interesting to see who manages to prove how much Caitlin influenced Jonathan or he influenced her. Nicole Jones's body was never found, and likely never will be. The police explained to the woman's relatives that the waste disposal company arrived at the apartment complex where the accomplices left the body the very next day. The company's employees took away the trash and consequently the body to another state, Michigan, for processing. Therefore, despite all efforts, Nicole's body was not found. The victim's relatives were frankly told that since the body had already ended up in the landfill and could have undergone processing, it would be very costly to even attempt to search for it. Naturally, Nicole's family found it difficult to hear that not only was she murdered, but now they wouldn't even be able to say goodbye to her and bury her properly. They tried to persuade the authorities to still make an effort to find the body, at least to conduct an autopsy and determine exactly what happened to the victim. But this is unlikely to be done. Additionally, the police and the prosecution have enough evidence, including the confessions of the accused, to prosecute Jonathan and Caitlin for murder, even without the victim's body. Caitlin Coons's parents revealed that they handed over custody of their daughter to the state because they could not control her and all she wanted to do was constantly run away from home. When the brutal and senseless murder of Nicole Jones was committed, Caitlin was 17 years old, feeling like an adult and believing she could do whatever she wanted. Now she is being tried as an adult, just as she wanted to become. Caitlin Coon's case raises questions about love, its legality from a legal standpoint, and its morality. It serves as a stark reminder of how quickly life can derail due to poor decisions and forbidden relationships.